Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right, how many of us were here last Sunday? You stayed back, you were watching here last Sunday. Oh, so some are joining this center for the first time today. What happened? The arrangement did not change. So it means that uh, probably you were in your hostel last Sunday. I think I was over here last week. Some are still very angry for seeing me here this morning. I don't know what they might be doing. If you are truly, truly angry that I'll be here, let me see your hands. If I know I'll be here, I'll see my face. I want to be here. You don't go somewhere here. If you are truly, truly angry and you are confident that you know that you are angry, let me see your hands. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So please be happy. Don't let my presence make you sad. Because be happy and enjoy yourself. Because the truth of the matter is I don't even know whether you are angry. So you will just be enjoying yourself. And I will be enjoying myself. So why not just relax and enjoy yourself and know that we are in God's presence. And in God's presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, we have pleasures here forever. Amen. Okay, if you are here last week, what was the subject of our discussion last week? Who is so confident that wants to retrieve what he or she has stored in our notes? What did we talk about last week? Great. You know, we started with PowerPoint, so innovation and creativity. We started that in the chapel, and uh, we discussed the power of focus, number one. Number two, we discussed the power of information. Number three, we talked about the power of declaration. And because we put it means, you know, at one place, then we broke into eight center last Sunday and we talked about the power of ski, am I right? And commitment and attitude. And you remember we made reference to the life of Basilea. I'm saying so that you know that we talked about the same thing in all the eight centers. This morning we are having ten centers and we'll be talking about the same thing. We refer to Basilea. That is Exodus chapter 31, am I right? Exodus chapter 31. And we saw how God said, I have called Bezidev and I feed him with the Spirit of God so that he will be able to engage in all artistic design. Now, if you look at that passage very well, in my center, we brought about, or we brought out about eight skills that Bezidev possessed. Woman, A.C. You read that passage very well. Bezile was involved in fashion designing, he designed a garment for Aaron, another priest. Bezile was involved in uh, carving wounds. The Bible says he was to carve wood. That is a sculptor. Then we talk about Bezile as a graphic designer or designer because he was to design, you know, uh, the temple. So many things. One man. The Bible also mentioned in that passage that he was to undo all the furnishing of the tabernacle. So basically, there was a furniture maker. He was a furniture maker. That's our four professions now, our four skills. One man, multiple skills. That is to tell you that as you are sitting right now before me, you are an embodiment of peace. Tell yourself, I am an embodiment of peace. I am not empty. Tell yourself, I am not empty. I am, I am an embodiment of peace. Many of you, because of your academic challenge, you've started looking down on yourself. Don't. The fact that you are not passing chemistry doesn't make your brain dull. It's just that chemistry is not part of what you are designed to handle. That is the truth. You better take that truth for me this morning. There is no fourth class brain anywhere in the world. There 
is no cost as bread. All brains are the same. Having the same number of cells, having the same number of colors. So it now depends on how you engage your brain that will deliver results. You have not read. The lady who came out as the fourth overall best student of Bowen University last graduation was dropped out in Bowen. Have you read that? She wrote her own story herself. How many of us have read that story? She dropped out of Bowen as a result of poor performance. So she went back home, picked up, I think we didn't make it, and came for A level and moved to 200 level. And the lady taught our program and came out as the third best student. So what has changed? The lady has not changed, but something changed in her. That is the truth. So you are an embodiment of endowment. Tell yourself, I am an embodiment of endowment. No wonder the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Tell yourself, I am fearfully made. I am, fearfully. I am wonderfully made. I am wonderfully. Hallelujah. Amen. You have so much that God is expecting so much from you. So don't disappoint God. I have so much and God is expecting so much from me. Don't disappoint God. I used to know a young lady who tried wine about three times and she couldn't make it. So they advised her to go for free NCE. I don't know if you are familiar with anything like that. Free NCE is even lower than NCE. Free NCE is like having or going through secondary school education in a tertiary institution. That's what you mean. So she enrolled, I'm talking about life school because that's what the person was. She enrolled for free NCE. In free NCE, her class, that is all who pay why. She taught her class, moved to NCE1, wrote uh, why and gave past why, taught her class NC1, NC2, NC3, and she came out as the best student in NCE. What has changed? Something has changed. Today she is a master student. So I'm not right. She is a master student. So don't look down on yourself. And don't allow anyone to look down on you. You are an embodiment of peace. I'm saying this because this will take us to what we want to discuss today. And our text for discussion today is Matthew chapter 25. Do you have something to write with? Do you have something to write with? You have the writing material, let me see, see it up. Your daughter, your pen. I know some of the type that you have done that's why. Please write. I want you to write something that you did. Because the revolution will take place in your life today and you will begin to affect your world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today God will cause you to write on your slumber and you begin to shine your light. Mighty name of Jesus Christ. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 25. Should I announce the topic of my Christianity? Yes, sir. Don't let me announce yet. I would like you to give it your own title before I will now tell you the title I'm talking about. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 14. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servant and delivered, everybody say deliver. And delivered unto them his goods. And delivered unto them his goods. I don't know how other person put it. Other person will use money, other person will use talent. I mean the whole other person can use talent. Okay, right? Now hold that pass. We are still going back in that passage. But I want you to hold that pass in your mind. He delivered unto them talent. Now very quickly, while you are still holding that verse, can somebody quickly check Ephesians chapter 4, I think verse 11 for me, or either verse 10 and 11. Very quickly, while you are still holding the book, you are going back to Matthew first. Yes, what do you have? 
Are you ready to sit down? Go to verse 9. Now, we are saying that what is peace, he was that those who are saying that he was 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 that he this is why it says, He ascended it to the heavenly height. He to the heavenly height. Alright? And gifts were given to men. Who was it that was ascending on earth? Eh? Jesus. And Jesus was going to heaven. He dropped gifts for men. He dropped gifts for men. Who are the men? You are not. He dropped gifts for men. As he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. John chapter 3, verse 27, I think, said, No man received anything except that which is given to him from above. Everybody say from above. <laughs> except that which is given to him from above. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light. In one there is no vividness of change or shadow of turning. I'm trying to support just the first verse we read. He delivered unto them his gift, his goods, his talent. Now let's go, verse 15. And unto one he gave how many talents? Right. To another he gave how many? Right. To another he gave how many? Right. According to what? Right. According to his several ability. Everybody has one ability or the other. Tell yourself, I have ability. I have ability. I have a gift. I have a gift. My gift is in me. Given to me by God. And he will take his gift from you. The gift is here. The gift is here. Alright? According to their several ability, and straight away took his job. Then let's begin to see what happened. Then he that received five talents did what? Went and traded with the same five talents and made how many more? Right. And made how many more? Right. Okay, number 17. And likewise, he that had received two did what? Gave two more. Okay, verse 18. And he that had received one went and did what? And did in the heart and did his lost talent, his lost money, his lost gift and good. Is that a good attitude? Mm. Talk about attitude last Sunday. He hid it. He hid it. Now let's see, let's see what happened. I want us to skip. Uh, okay, let's go to verse 20. Okay, verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants comes and reckon with them. He came to, you know, find out home and do your return. And so, he that had received five came and brought five more, and the Lord said to him, you know, good and faithful servants, verse 21, you have been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Father. The same thing did the world that received to him, he came and said, Master, I have gained two more. The master said the same thing to him. Well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome, enter into the joy of your father. Now let's see the complaint. The excuse of the third guy, verse 24. Verse 24. Everybody are you in verse 24? Yes. Okay, let's read together from whichever, whichever verse. Yes. And he which had received the one that came and said, Everyone. Yeah. It's not as I said unto me, you 
describe as unprofitable. What did he do? What did he do that made the master to say you are profitable? Huh? He did not invest. You see? How did he start? I was a Now, this message is divided into two parts. The implications of this passage, then how to work on your kids and make profit with it. But let's start first. What do you think should be the appropriate title for this passage? I don't want to answer. You want to tell me something? Why are you looking at your friend? What do you think will be an appropriate time? You guys want to force me to come back, but I'm not going to come in that. Yeah? If I have more time, I'm not here. The development of talent or gifts, okay? Yes, this role has been. And if I want to do something, power of commitment. Are you writing them like those are various like power of commitment, development of gift or talent? Yes? Yes, please go ahead. Sorry? Fear, an enemy of innovation. Wow. Fear is an enemy of creativity and innovation, okay? Right attitude to your gift or to your gifty, okay? Ah, this class is a brilliant class, all right? Sorry? Wisdom with talent. Great. You are even confusing me now. <laughs> Whether my own topic is relevant any longer. It's not this fantastic and fascinating talk. Let's hear from the bar. The bar people. You are not bad people. Those that are sitting at the back. Can we hear from you? Those are the ones that are angry with me. So I better be careful with them. Alright. Sorry? And let's see your God giving talent. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, we need to unless our God given talent. Something is coming to your mind. Okay. You know what I'll type through my God? Let's see whether my God is waiting any longer. I won't type through is stewards of God's gifts. Stewards of God's gifts. So when they ask you, when they ask you from other center, what is the topic of your, you will not say you didn't tell us any topic. Yes. Stewards of God's gifts. Now let's go back to that passage and draw implications. I have five implications from that passage. But before I share my own, I would like to listen to you. What are the implications you can draw from this story? Very powerful story. Very rich story. That is very relevant and applicable to our own setting. What are the implications you can draw from this passage? Yes? Number one, time is good. We are finishing this argument by level. Okay? Feel all right? Probably, okay, sorry, sorry. Try to be the best. Are you writing something down? Try to be the best. Okay? Number two, implication from that passage. God expects us to multiply our gift. God expects us to multiply our gift. Maybe I should just help you with this. Every gift has the capacity to grow, to multiply. That is the implication of what she just said, okay? Yes. 
As a believer, you have the capacity to manifest every gift that God has given to you. I'm expecting you to even say something that should be the foundation. Everybody, that is the foundation. Everybody has been given a gift. It doesn't matter the quantity, I don't want to say the volume. Everybody has been given a gift. You have a gift. Stop looking at others. You have a gift. You have yours. You have your own gift. To so one he gave five, to so another he gave two, to so another he gave one. But he did not deny any. He gave everyone his own gift. Alright? Any other implication? Yes? You pray closer to my friend. Whether you like him or, like him or not, I will still come to you. Alright? Let me hear from this book. What are the implications you can see from that pastor? Yes? Don't tell me you are not running over there. Okay? From this side. We will always give a hand for everything. That's actually the import of stewards. That's the idea of stewards. We will always give a hand of everything that God has given to us. We will always give a hand. Please, I want you to bear it in mind. If we give a hand, you will give a hand of everything that God has given to you. You will give a hand. If you are living without consciousness that you will give account, then you will know how to engage everything that God has given to you. Okay, can I hear from here? What are the implications you can see? But they ask you to draw out lessons. What are the lessons you can see from that person? Yes? Yes? During the passing is up, let's give us one lesson. What is one lesson we can draw from that passing? Yes. Yes. God bless you. Collected from the one that was, you know, lazy and slothful, and God added it to that guy. All right. Great. The master knew each individual's ability 
So he gave them according to their ability. He gave them according to their ability. Praise the Lord. No matter what you do from now till tomorrow, God will not have what you don't have ability to carry. He will not add it to you. He will not add it to you. So if you want more, just keep developing your ability. If you want more, develop your ability. You that you have 24 hours, you can't use 24 hours. Even with a little assignment, you think God will add more to you? God doesn't do like that because he doesn't want you to crash. All right? At the end, we must glorify God with our gifts. All right, somebody raise up. Okay. Refusing to use what God has given you opens you up to God's judgment. Very serious one. Say you slothful and unprofitable servant. Cast him into outer darkness. We should not be caged by our fear. The reason many people don't adventure is because of fear. Of fear. Fear will demobilize you. Fear will stagnate you. Fear will make you to remain in one position. Fear, 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 fear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Many people want to advance their study, but fear, fear, fear. Many people will have attempted so many things, but fear, fear has caged them. Fear has demobilized them. Don't allow fear to demobilize you. Make attempts, launch, move forward. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. All right? Somebody still want to add? There is zero for more. Let me listen to this. There is a need for us, that is like a rider to what we just said. We need to come out of our comfort zone. We need to come out of our comfort zone. You know, the Bible says something uh, in Ecclesiastes. The Bible says, He who look at the cloud will not sow. I mean, and he who consider the wind or something like that will not reap. He said there is a lion in the street. And actually there was nothing. Praise the Lord. I remember when I was much, much, much more younger, I was in primary school. And I followed my uncle to his uh, place of work. Uh, he was a bricklayer. So I followed him every other day to go and help him, you know, on the site. And they asked me to go and fetch water, to be fetching water for those who are working. And I went to pass through a mini forest to go and fetch water from the stream and bring it out. Ah. And I say, how will I go there? It's no more like me. So I was making all kinds of excuses not to undertake that they should give me something that will make me to remain on the side. They said, no, we're going to be fetching water. So I carry my pocket. And uh, because there was fear already in me, thinking that I would be kidnapped, and of course there was no single story of kidnapping in those very rare. But you see, because there was fear in me, as soon as I stepped onto the path that leads to the forest, you know sometimes bird we just a group of birds we just emanate from the bush. As soon as I said, hey, 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 baby, oh, hey, baby. I shouted that they were rushing down from the side. What have I said? I saw some men. They wanted to say, men in this place. How did I see human being? It was in my mind. They were not real. They were not real. You know what psychologists, what they call fear? Write fear on your note, fear in capital. In or, is, is this horizontal? It's horizontal. Write it horizontal. Is it vertical? Write it vertical. Fear. F E A R. Is that? Fear. Psychologists say fear is false experience appearing real. That's the meaning of fear. False experience appearing real. They are not real. They are just 
being imagined, they are not real. Praise the Lord. All right, this is what I have here. Let me summarize all that we have said. They are all what I've written here. Number one, that you have specific gift or gifts. You have specific gift or gifts from God. Everybody under the sun of my voice this morning has a gift. You have a gift. You have got to explore your gift. Everybody has a specific gift or gift from God. Some are multi-talented. They are multi-talented. They are multi-gifted. They are blessed with all manner of gifts. The Bible says, as he ascended on high, he did what? He gave gifts unto men. I want this thing to ring in your heart throughout this week and this month that you are an embodiment of gifts. You have it. You have it. Number two. That's a summary of what I would have said. Number two is, you are to employ or use your gift to serve humanity. You are to employ or use your gift to serve humanity. Every gift not engaged remains latent and useless. So use your gift. Use your gift. Number three, every gift has the capacity to multiply. Every gift has the capacity to multiply. But remember number two, you have to do what? You have to do what? It is as you use your gift that it multiplies. By God's grace, I write. I speak, I write. I know I have the gift of speaking. Not being talkative, book, but ability to communicate, and I write. But I notice that when I stop writing for like one week, I start noticing a kind of reduction in the strength of my writing. How many of us have noticed that? Yes. If you're a writer, you must be writing every day. Write something, put it on your WhatsApp page. Write something, put it on your Facebook page. Write something, put it on your blog. Just keep writing. As you keep writing, your ability to write becomes, you know, uh, multiplied. So every gift has a capacity to multiply. Number four, there are diversity of gifts which manifest a different form. There are diversity of gifts. I want somebody to read John chapter 1 verse 16. John chapter 1 and verse 16. There are diversities of gifts and they manifest in different form. John 1 16. Yes? And of his fullness have all you received. Have we all received? And grace for grace. And grace for grace. That is KJB or NIV. Now, somebody should read from the message. Or amplify. Amplify especially. Amplify version. John 1 16. For out of his fullness and abundance. And abundance we are all received. Okay. We have all received. We are all received. All have a share, and we, and we are all supplied with one grace after another, one grace after another and, spiritual blessing, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor, favor upon favor, and give heap upon heap. That is what I'm looking for. We have gift heap upon heap. So you don't have any excuse. You don't have any excuse. Number five, no gift should be left latent or unexplored. No gift should be left latent or unexplored. Praise God. Now we have settled that. Did you follow me up to this point? 
we have settled that everybody here today has a gift. That gift has the power to multiply. That gift should not be left latent or unexplored. That gift should be used to serve humanity. Now, let's look at how to become good stewards of our gift now. But I hope we have time to ask all of you to write something down that you know you can do. Write something that, that you know you can do. At least one thing that you know you can do. Don't be surprised that if your own is out of God, know that it's a gift. Ah, that they can talk. Oh my God. Please write it down. We will now begin to see how can we convert our talk to some humanity. Yes, this may be tough for somebody. Think very well. Let me give you two minutes. Think very well. What is one gift that I have? You know, I didn't start from spiritual gift too. So that you know, say, eh, me, I'm not a pastor. Me, I'm not a choir member. Me, I'm not a... Uh, we are not talking about... We are coming from the generosity of God to all humanity. Nobody was born to this world empty. Everybody came as an embodiment of gift. You may call it talent. The second thing we clarify that. How you can be good stewards of your talent. Somebody is here, your own is to run. You can run. Your own, you can play football. Your own, you can cook. Your own, you can arrange. When you set your sitting room, you can arrange your sitting room in five ways within one day. Can I have somebody like that? There is somebody here you can organize. As they are talking, you are already sketching something on paper and you give them. There is somebody here, as I am talking now, you can arrange my speech into a book. You can give it chapters and content. Pa, 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 pa. And say, Chaplin, your message, you can turn into a book. This is content. It's a gift. It's a gift. Some of us, our own is we can think ahead of others. Some of us, we always see new things in everything. Don't take it for granted. You always see new things in everything that nobody can ever think of. It's a gift. Some of us don't know that the way we walk is a gift. Some naturally they don't need to practice how to walk. They just walk in a very fascinating way. For us, some they are struggling to learn how to can walk. For you, it's just natural. Now we'll be talking about how to be good stewards of some. Some of us don't know that we have gifts like natural gifts. We don't need any ideas. We don't need any possibilities. So you go ahead to disfigure the natural thing. You will not be happy by this. Look at your way, All right, have you written something that? Are you sure you have written something that? And you go and be thinking about such? How you can use such to serve humanity? Okay, how do we become a good manager, a good steward of God's gifts in our life. Number one, recognize your gifts. Recognize your gifts. It's very important. If you don't recognize your gifts, abuse definitely is certain. 
Recognize my attitude. Write what you think you have. Write it down. Recognize your gift. Recognize your gift. Understand what you have. Know what you have. Recognize it. Have an understanding of it. That's number one way of being a ghost one. Number two, train your gift or develop your gift. Do you know that what those two guys did was simply developing their gift? They developed their gift. They made a tent. They made a tent to expand the ability that God has given to them. But the last guy just dig the ground and cover the gift. I don't care. I don't want. I don't want to stretch myself. I don't want to come out of my comfort zone. I don't want anybody to trouble me. I don't like this wala. When he come, he will come and take his thing. He refused to train his gift. He refused to develop his gift. He refused to expand his gift. You are not a good steward if you allow your gift to remain like that. How can you remain the same? Year in, year out. Do you remember the story Jesus narrated of a tree that was not bringing forth fruit? He got there, he looked for food, nothing, and he said, cut it down. So the gardener put there and said, okay, let's give it one more year. We will have fertilizer, we will have, we will expose it to rain. After one year, if it doesn't bring forth fruit, let's cut it down. Are you here? You are not fruitful in any way. You are not adding value to your environment. You are not adding value to, to your country, to your state, to your class, to your school. You are not adding any value. Please, I want you to consider that. I want you to check it. Train your gift. What do we mean by that again? By training your gift, we mean there is nothing you think you have that somebody else has not gotten before. And that is making way with it. Look at, study those who have used the kind of thing you have, study how they have engaged their own, and learn from them. That is what we are talking about. Raise the Lord. Number three, take advantage of every opportunity. Take advantage of every opportunity to try out your ability. Unfortunately, there are so many people here who don't belong to any group Either in the chapel, in their program, in their college, they don't belong anywhere on this campus. They are not going through their study, jet, 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 until they disappear from them. What will you write as your contribution to Bowen University at the end of your stay on this campus? When many people return, they come to sign their parents and they come to the chapel, I always crack this joke. I say, how do you want me to clear you? On what basis should I clear you? So I will start by saying that, do you pay your tithe? And they will say, sir, I pay my tithe now. I say, okay, there's no way I can have the record of your tithe. I will now say, which unit do you belong to? Uh, sir, actually, uh, actually, when I was in honor level, I thought of joining the drama, but one way or the other, and the two hundred level, the three hundred level, and that's why he has disappeared. Nothing. Recognize a platform you can engage to demonstrate your gift. Recognize that platform and begin to maximize it. If you are a writer, make a thing. Submit an article to a newspaper. Submit an article to the journal of your department, to the newsletter of your department. Write something, print it out, paste it on your college board. Do something. Send something to your Facebook page. Begin to maximize every opportunity. If you have anything going on there that you think is an opportunity for you, recognize it, showcase it, just attend. Submit your application. Do something. Praise the Lord. Do something. All right? Number four, right? Is that number four? Stay on your gift. Stay on your gift. Don't run the task better. Stay on your gift. Don't say because uh, Joan is good at this, let me try it. Treasure is good at this, let me try it. I know what treasure is good, let me I know spoken word, but spoken word. I know drama, but I drama. Singing, but I singing. Stay on your gift. Stay on your gift. Refine it, contune it. Use it, engage it until it becomes an envy of people around you. Stay on your gift. Stay on your gift. Look at that guy. He stayed on his gift until he gives multiplied to five. 
and a broad profit. Stay on your deep. If you like to sleep, sleep. Me and I read through and said, Yes, your introduction is perfect. 
your content is okay, they give them the minimum word, the most right. I mean, the maximum, the most right. But she sent her work to another person who she thought is an expert. And that man tore the work apart, condemned the work. She even gave me the voice note of that person. Say you can't be writing this kind of thing and think that it will you know many people are writing in the first place your introduction is bad. It's bad, you don't write like that and how can you when I listen to you I say this is wrong. Your introduction is good. I've been writing now, not yesterday, no. Your introduction is good. That opening sentence is okay, maybe like that. But the lady was still feeling bad. Because once are powerful, the word was counting her. I say, okay, by the way, the man that was vetting your work, how many paper has he written? Show me his work. Who is he? Is he going to be among those that will judge you? I say, forget about his own comment. This thing is okay. This thing is okay. Do you know that about three or so weeks ago, they did the final uh, whatever, and she came out first. She came out first, and she was given 50,000 naira. And that is, that was her first attempt. Avoid fire extinguisher, those who will not encourage you. See, Titi, I'm putting this idea together. Titi, when we, people have done this thing before, now what are you, you better get something serious your brain instead of this thing that are uh, wasting your time. Avoid them. I want you to think very well this morning, who are those that are discouraging you? Who are those that are saying that you are good for nothing? Who are those that are saying that it won't amount to anything? It will even be your way. See, sometimes, see, I, I know one young lady. The way the parents are grow up, there is no way she will succeed in life. The one they get from hearing her with her junior sister. Yeah, you were able to get your junior sister for them to do it. Better now than your junior one. And the thing that affecting her, you know, affecting her self-image, you know when they call, they don't have an image. So they don't do that, yeah, so it's not a man, yeah, so it's not a man, yeah. In the result, they didn't have a rank, I tell you, when they call, 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 it's moving from your parents. Avoid them, raise them up. Finally, use your gift. Tell your neighbor, use your gift. Tell somebody, use your gift. So as you go this week, you want to find a way of using your gift. You want to creatively find out how you can deploy that which you have written down. You want to tell yourself, I will despise my gift. I will no longer despise my gift. I want you to close your eyes. Let's reflect. Everybody close your eyes. Let's reflect. I want the usher to please get ready. After the prayer, I will soon collect the offering. Think, 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 think. I want to give you time to think. I want to give you time to think. Your life must not remain the same this week. You are valuable. You are the VIP. You are so important. Don't let any man despise your youth. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Don't let any man despise your youth. But be that an example of believer in God, in speech, in faith, in purity. Now I want you to deal with fear. Fear of comparison, fear of rejection, fear of failure, you know, you look inferior to yourself. You keep every day looking at your friend in your room, always saying they are better than you, better than you, and you are saying no good thing can come out of me. That is not true because no two individuals anywhere in the world are the same. It is because you are you, that is why God made you to be you. You are not like somebody else. Walk confidently as from today. Walk boldly and tell anybody. Anybody that is fatter than you is too fat. Anybody that is shorter than you is too short. Anybody that is taller than you is too tall. 
Anybody that is skinny than you is to see. Just manage and appreciate yourself. If you are a dark person, don't bother to join your shade. You are just happy. If you are light, just appreciate your complexion. No matter what, just appreciate yourself. Value yourself. Now, pray and tell God, Lord, today there will be an opening for my gift. You will open my eyes this way to see the opportunity to deploy my gift. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will give me grace to deploy my gift. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to pray with somebody here this morning. You have recognized by the grace of God the ability you have. But you know within yourself that you have not employed that ability very well. You have been postponed, you have been procrastinated, maybe when I graduate. But this morning, as we are teaching, ideas are coming to your mind of ways you can begin to channel those abilities. Will you like to rise up like I pray with you for confidence and grace that God will begin to empower you from this morning and you begin to make attempt? I tell you, as you take the first step this way, many doors will begin to open. Lift up your hand and I pray with you right now. Heavenly Father, I pray. Because you said in your word that out of your fullness we have received grace upon grace. And you told us that we should not receive your grace in vain. I pray, Father, the deposit of grace, the deposit of gifts, of ability, of potentials that you have invested, you have released in this life. I pray that this week, as they move out from this hall, opportunities, windows of grace, doors of grace will be opened unto them and they will begin to channel those abilities, serving humanity in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that divine idea, divine confidence, wisdom be released unto you to be able to know what to do, how to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bible says the manifestation of the gift is given to every man to profit with it. Today, your life will begin to add value to others. Your life will begin to add value to this.